Happy holiday, you totally obsessed tennis player. It's that time of year where we're all in the spirit of giving and saying thanks. And I want to thank you by offering these 12 days of deals for the holidays where I'm giving you the best of the best, my most popular courses, the ones I'm the most proud of at a massive discount. And I want to play for you today a great lesson. You're actually going to get four lessons from four legends. This is called the Legends Guide to Tennis Mastery. I honestly could not believe I was making this course. I was in disbelief the whole time because I got to interview Rod the Rocket Laver that's in the course, John Newcomb, Fred Stolle, and Roy Emerson, who has the most Grand Slams. Everybody thinks it's Novak, but it's actually Roy Emerson. And they have such wisdom when it comes to double strategy, single strategies, breaking down opponents, and amazing drills that are all inside of the Legends Guide Tennis Mastery. When I launched this, I sold it at 197, which to me is kind of like crazy because it's such an, an incredible experience. There's, you're not going to find this anywhere else on the internet. But for the 12 days of deals today, you can get it for 47 bucks. So check out this lesson. And then if you want a great deal and you want to be taught by over 90 Grand Slam titles by just four men, then you'll pick it up. All right, enjoy. Holding your best stuff back, something you haven't done before. Uh, I always like to do that, especially even in a five set match, you know, I'd get into the fifth set and I want to have something up my sleeve. Uh, that I hadn't hadn't done previously. Uh, it could be just a little something, but you only need a little something to get that one important point, and that can swing a match. Yeah, and that that's, reminds me of what we were talking about last night, which I'd love you to talk about just real quick, is when you played on clay, you know, talking about bringing the best stuff early, you would actually stay back, which was not something you were the best at, but you were like, it's good enough. And I can hang with these guys. If I can hang with them at their game, then at the end, as the match got closer and closer and tighter and tighter, deeper and deeper, you would then start bringing out the net stuff, correct? Well, um, nearly 100% of my early tennis up till 12, 13 years of age was played on clay. So, you know, I knew I could stay back and, and rally because that's where I'd, I'd learnt the game. And then I developed a serve and volley game and that, that became my forte. Uh, <clears throat> and when I first started travelling overseas at 17 years of age, and we played a lot in Europe on the clay. And of course, I'd go with my aggressive game and I'd always have close matches against the clay quarters, but, you know, it was losing more than I was winning. And... Um, it was probably uh, after about uh, six, seven years of traveling and playing on the clay and I, I gradually started to change my game plan um, over there. So I, I started to think, okay, this is best of five sets. Um, if I can play for an hour and a half, mainly from the back of the court and stay level with this guy, then I can start I can bring more gears, I can start changing gear, I can start coming into the net a little more, a little more, a little more, and I haven't played my A game and I'm still playing level. I like my chances and my attitude was this may take me three or four hours out here, but uh, by the end of the match I'm going to be using my A game mostly. Can, can you play under pressure? Yeah. And I think that, that probably you know, was the best thing that ever helped me, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the pressure was Playing, un playing well under pressure, you know, if you're down 15, 40, you know, oh God, now what will I do? You just poke, poke it back? And I guess my theory was give it a, give it a ride. Give it a ride. Give it a hit. And, uh -huh. and I think that, yeah, yeah, you miss your share, but all of a sudden, you know, you, you get your guy sort of sitting back thinking, is he going to hit this hard or not? Uh -huh. and, and of course, so I think each side of that coin is right. You know, be, yeah. be consistent, but don't get too, uh, too aggressive. Yeah, but you knew you played so many hours and hit so many balls that you had the trust that at the right moment, I trust my shot, it's gonna work, right? Uh, I, you know, I, that, that is true. I think if you know, practice and, and working on certain shots, whether you're hitting a cross court from a deep ball, you know, are you getting it back into the location you're looking for? I know another, another trick is to playing with Roy Emerson and I used to travel together on the amateur circuit and we went through the Caribbean circuit, went through Europe, 
but we just the two of us you know yes there were other players but a lot of times they didn't want to play at the times we wanted to so we practiced almost all the time mm -hmm. and when you when you when it's like a hit hit down the tram lines we call them the tram lines you know See if you can. How many times you can hit that top spin backhand down the tram line? So is the tram lines in between the doubles alley? Is right. it mm -hmm. in between the doubles alley, and seeing how many you could make in a row. That's so, a great drill. And so that's another another thing is how deep are you going with with the shot? Mm -hmm. You've got it's got to get over the service line all the time, mm. and not not once missed. But you, you've got to get them all over there. Otherwise, we we'll hold the point up, do it again. Lots of rec players go out there. They they play in leagues and they can't necessarily handpick their partner every week people are out of town on so what, what are some of the things that you could do to make uh, a partner that you've never played with feel comfortable with you and and maybe if you're kind of like the football coach on the tennis court what would be some things that you would you know maybe say to them to help them feel comfortable and to know how you guys are going to set up and play that day well what I used to say to my partner occasionally I said whenever you want to hit a ball in on your return, I'll be very happy. So that <laughs> <laughs> that kept them nice and loose. Uh huh. So, so to uh, kind of keep it loose and funny is good. Yeah, yeah. You've got to have a good communication, and uh, I like to play the juice court. And I was always looking for someone who may be a little bit more aggressive on the backhand side uh, to play that side. Also make the returns, but may be able to bring off a pretty good big shot. Mm -hmm. on a game point. The, the player on the first court here has to be consistent. The player on the deuce court? Yes. If you have a player on the deuce court that's erratic, then uh, the partner is always facing 15 love. And if you don't win the next point, it's 30 love all of a sudden. So the first court player should never miss a return. Should always get into the point. Yeah, that you, guy's never miss a return. Well, if you get your racket onto it and you respect whatever serve comes in, uh, then you play the shot that you're going to uh, still be looking after your partner, trying to protect your partner. Mm -hmm. The way to play doubles is to make your partner look good. Mm -hmm. You don't play singles out there. And every shot you play, you know where your partner's standing. If they're vulnerable at the net, you've got to keep it low. If you can't do that, you play a controlled high lob. Very good, very good. So you're saying that, in general, the, the best way to play is you've got your, your consistent player, maybe doesn't have the biggest weapons, they play the deuce court so that you can have maybe the person who, you know, goes for bigger shots, maybe misses a little more, but we, we always want to be consistent, but they've got maybe that knockout punch that can break. That's kind of something you're looking for. Exactly. And uh, if you get that combination, uh uh, then you've got a chance every time you play. Very good. Fred, thanks for, so much for coming out and doing that. Thanks. And I know it was a lot of fun with the kids. They were pretty good, huh? Oh, very good, very good. But uh, <laughs> just a couple of tips for you folks over there, recreational players that uh, hopefully have enjoyed the work on the court today. Yeah, just three quick things to help you go. When you're taking or watching videos or taking lessons or even taking coaching lessons, uh, just try and pick out a couple of things out of the, uh, the day that will help. Don't try and absorb everything that you see on the video, everything that the coach tells you, because then it'll just play with your mind. Just pick a couple of things out of that that may help, whether it's the ball toss, the arm on the ball toss that has to remain straight, or just a couple of little things that can help your serve. And the second tip there is just uh, as recreational players, most of us get out there and you're playing socially, you go out and practice forehands, backhands, volleys for 10 minutes, and then you say, well, let's hit a couple of serves and start. Well, my suggestion there is practice your serve just as much as you practice the return of serve, because if you're playing doubles or singles, anything out there on the tennis court, and you don't lose your serve, well, you can't get beat. Thirdly and lastly, return of serve. A lot of players will watch the pros now, and they'll say, hey, I want to play like the pros. The pros, when they get a break point, they go for broke. Doubles has changed somewhat now, particularly on second serves. They tee off on those second serves. Don't do that at a recreational level. Get the ball back into play. You'll win many more points that way. Break serve much more because the fellow up the other end of the serve, your opponent up the other end of the court is just as nervous as you are. So on the break points, try and make that return of serve. Ken Rosewell, who I played with and won some Grand Slams, he used to get so frustrated if he couldn't get that second serve back into play. That's the best tip I can give you. Okay, so if you enjoyed that lesson, that small sample of lessons, 
you're going to love Legend's Guide to Tennis Mastery. I mean, I have a smile on my face after watching those videos back again. So I think if you didn't enjoy those, you kind of have to be a Scrooge. But if you're not a Scrooge and you're a totally obsessed tennis player, you're absolutely going to love Legend's Guide to Tennis Mastery because these legends, they go through so many great modules to where they're breaking down mental toughness. Like I love John Newcomb when he talks about the two minds that we all play with and how to navigate those minds and what you should do immediately after you lose a tough tennis match. Another thing they talked about is how to bring out different stuff. You know, how to close out a match is really tough. How to win those close matches. The, the legends, the Grand Slam champions, they think a little differently. So he talks about how he was able to always save his best for last. Very interesting. He's amazing. Then Roy Emerson goes on the court with four hot shot juniors, and we talk a lot about double strategy and doubles plays and court positioning and, and how you should be playing for your partner. And when he said that, it reminded me of something that Gigi Fernandez once said, where she said, you know, I love playing with Martina, but it was kind of tough because if I lost, it was kind of like my fault. Everybody knew Martina was the greatest. Plus, she didn't always play the shot that I felt was helping me because she was so talented. Sometimes she just do her own thing and I didn't know where to go. So you're probably not playing with Martina and, and you're probably not Martina. So you don't have that talent that she has. So you want to be playing the right shots for your partner. So you and your partner will be on the same page. That's what Roy Emerson really, really preaches. And uh, then we had Fred Stolle, and he went on the court and did a serve lesson with uh, some hot shot juniors. And finally, Rod the Rocket Laver talks about practice and what it takes to be great, and he goes through some of his favorite uh, tennis drills. I'm going to leave you with people who actually have been going to the te tennis fantasy camp for over 30-plus years to talk about how they learn tennis from these legends. Cause you might be thinking, well, they're great players, but how do I know they're great coaches? They've actually been running a camp for 30 plus years now where people show up year after year, get amazing tips. They pay over $5,000 every single year. They go back every year too, by the way. So a lot of these people that you're watching on video have probably spent upwards of 15, 20, $30,000 on legends camps because they just love it and they get a lot out of it. You can pick it up right now for $47 and you're not even taking any risk, right? Because if you don't like it, you know what to do. You just give me your 12 deals of holidays guarantee. You just write me an email at crunchtimecoaching at Gmail and I will give you a full refund for your $47 if you happen not to like the legends telling you how to play great tennis. I don't see how that's possible, but it could be and I'll still refund you. Anyway, I know you're going to love this. I love it. Can't believe I made it. And I want to give it to you right now for a steal of a holiday deal. Take care. To learn from these legends, what are some of the most valuable things they teach you? And what do you think the people at home are going to learn from these legends of the game? Well, these are the best volleyers in the tennis history. These guys know what it means to move forward. These guys understand doubles. These are also the greatest doubles players ever. People like Roy Emerson, John Newcomb. These guys have won more slams than anyone who've ever played, particularly in doubles, they understand about movement, about volleys, about teamwork, about the emotional part of the game, about the strategic part of the game, technical things, about approach shots, how to aim your serve, how to practice your overhead, all the things that are gonna make you a complete all-court, all-around player. Yeah, these guys are truly the masters of the game. They really are. They really understood the game from A to Z. They knew the game, how it was played then. They studied the game the way it's played now. They understand the whole court. They understand serve volley. They understand ground strokes. A lot of these guys won the French championships as well as a lot of big titles on grass. They just understand what it means to be an all-court complete player and a player who can play for your whole life. So there you go, guys. You heard it from a tennis historian and writer, Joel Drucker, on why he comes back year after year. You, know, you can get a lot of tips from your um, your local ranch pros and that, but these guys uh, can provide you with wisdom that is uh, you just don't get from anybody else. I mean, for an example, um, Roy Emerson. I don't play on Roy's team. I've been playing on John Newcomb's team uh, for every year but one year down here, and I was in the middle of a singles match. And I missed about four or five backhands in a row against Emmo's Emmo's uh, guy on the court. And uh, Emmo walked by and he just looked at me and he said, uh, Hey, Blue, uh, right thumb in left pocket. 
And so I was walking back <clears throat> to the service line and I started thinking about it. And when you take your right thumb and you stick it in your left pocket, the head of your racket is low, your shoulder has to turn, and you actually you got to bring your foot around in order to do it. So you're in a perfect position for a backhand. He didn't go through the whole mechanics of the stroke. He didn't say, get up under the ball. He didn't, all he said was right thumb, left pocket. So Marty, what keeps you coming back year after year of the fantasy camp? Well, there are many things, but the thing that is probably most instructive for you is every morning, the, one of the, some of the legends will give you instructions on various things, you know, doubles instruction, return of serve, how to hit a serve, um, and it's absolutely priceless. I mean, the kinds of information that they give you, you just don't get it.